Hey, welcome to the workshop, MM, and today we're gonna to be showing you how to install the Tronic 250 controller. Uh, we're gonna be doing a dual motor setup today on our Fido scooter. So here's one of our controllers. Like I said, we'll be installing two today. Let's get started. First, we're going to start with hooking up the throttle. These are the wires for our throttle. This red wire here is for the five volt. Black wire is ground, and the green is ADC1, which is what is going to be reading the throttle input. Those are the three we're using on this build. You may need to use others for whatever build you have. So there's a second throttle input and there's also TX and RX. RX is the gray wire, TX is the white wire, and ADC2 is this orange wire at the end here. To seat the pins, I'm gonna be using these needle nose pliers. Next, we're gonna be putting in our motor sensors. Starting off, we've got the black one at the end there that's ground. The next three, the blue, yellow, and green wires, don't really matter. When you run motor detection, they'll be written there, so you don't really have to worry about those. The orange wire is for temperature, and in our build, we didn't use that. Our motors didn't have a temperature sensor. Um, and then the red wire at the very end there is five volt. Feels good. Next, I'm going to be putting in um, our CAN bus connector. So that'll allow both of the controllers to communicate with one another. Next, we're gonna be plugging in our phase wires. Don't worry too much about uh, what order you do them in. We're gonna be using VESC tool to do motor detection and it'll help us sort that out. Okay, so now we're gonna be installing our second controller. It's the same steps, same position. The only difference is that um, we're not going to be plugging in the throttle. So let's connect those secondary phase wires here for the rear motor. So now we're going to put in our canvas. Okay, next we're going to be connecting our switch here. We're going to connect this to one controller at the moment, but if you were to connect it to both controllers, you'd need to make a custom Y connector. Let's get that plugged in. As you can see, we've got this gray wire here connected. It's going at the very top pin uh, bottom for you and we also have the black one this black one is the ground let's get this switched on okay so now we're going to connect our qs8 connectors they are spark proof which is awesome super safe we don't have our battery connected yet so no worry of sparking or anything right now anyway we do have a custom Y connector here. Um, a lot of this wiring right now you're seeing is actually custom. Um, so if you are working on your own project at home, feel free to like cut and solder things down so you have more space in, a, in the body. Okay, 
Okay, so currently we have our switch here in the off position. As you can see, there's no power going to the controller that we have connected. And when we flip that, you can see the lights coming on with the power. Okay, so we've got everything turned on here. We're using VESC tool to um, scan for our devices. These controllers are equipped with an onboard Bluetooth module, so you don't have to worry about how you're gonna connect or anything. And in the video description, I will link a couple of uh, alternate applications you can use depending on what device you're using. So we're using VESC tool, we're using an Amazon Fire tablet right now. We're just gonna click the scan button. We're already seeing the controllers, but just so you can see. We're scanning, we're gonna connect to one of the controllers. Um, if you're doing a dual setup like we are right now, you might notice that you won't be able to connect to one of the controllers. As long as you're connecting to the master, um, it'll kind of write everything for both of them, so you don't have to worry about that. I'm not gonna make this a preferred device. You can if you want to. Got a little warning there. We're gonna click on setup motors. We are not gonna load the default parameters. For our purposes, we're just gonna stick with the generic setup here, click next. We are going with the large outrunner motors. Choose what best suits you. Little warning. We are working with 16 battery cells, so I'm just gonna input that here. Wheel diameter and motor pulls look good. We're gonna run our detection. And we are going to have it detect all motors over the canvas. Okay, success. So now it leads us to a screen where you can choose um, what the motors are detecting as like forward and reverse. Uh, you can also invert those settings. So I'm gonna go for the rear one here. So I clicked forward and it went backwards. So what I'm gonna do is invert that. There we go. Reverse. Looking good. Um, okay, so I clicked forward for uh, the front motor and it went backwards, so we're going to invert that one as well. Looking good. Okay, we're going to finish that up. Uh, now we're going to go on setup input. So that's how we can change the throttle settings. You might have to go and then um, choose either the, the VESC or CAN VESC. VESC. I'm gonna be selecting the ADC input used for conventional e-bike throttles. Okay, there we go. Currently it's detecting the range of the throttle. So just give that a press a couple times. And hit next. This all looks good. This is pretty much just default settings, so I'm going to finish that up. And now, when I press the throttle, um, we should get a little, little go. There we go. I hope you enjoyed this installation guide. 
Um, if you have any comments, suggestions, critiques, feel free to let us know in the comments. Take care.